You see, the father was a business owner, and on the side of his business was a brick wall. He decided one summer he was going to have his son destroy this brick wall and rebuild it. When he told his son this, his son looked up at him with despair. He said, Father, how could I ever rebuild this wall? It would take me a lifetime. He looked down at his young son with love in his eyes. He said, son, you don't say that. You don't say I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall ever built. No. He paused, bent down, picked up a brick, picked up a scaffold. He said, you say I'm going to lay this brick as perfect as any brick has ever been laid. You do that again day after day, and soon enough you'll have your brick wall. He threw some cement on it and laid it down ever so gently. Now, who in here has ever had a dream that seemed too big to conquer on your own? I, too, have had a dream like this. Standing in front of this stage, in front of you all today, is a dream I've had since my freshman year seminar class with Drew Harville, where I first saw a TEDx talk. Everyone in this audience has a dream or a passion or a song that they need to get out and share with the world. For me, that dream is getting the United States and hopefully the whole world off of fossil fuels and onto solar, clean, reusable energy. I've known that I wanted to be part of this workforce since my senior year of high school. I was driving with my father, and we passed by a solar panel. And things got kind of serious, and he looked over at me and he said, Ryder, the man who's able to capture the sun's energy will be one of the most powerful men in the world. And since that moment, I've been obsessed with harnessing the sun's energy. Now, why do I think solar? If you think about it, Plants have been doing it for a really long time. They break down molecules using the sun's energy through a process we know as photosynthesis. But unlike our plant friends, we have machines that do work for us. And in order to power these machines, we have to burn fossil fuels, mainly in crude oil, natural gas, or coal. And when we do this, our carbon is released into our atmosphere. And through that, UV rays from the sun enter into our our atmosphere, which increases the temperature of our Earth. But not in a good way, like, I'm going to go outside and get a better tan, but in a bad way, like, it's unnatural. You see, scientists in a recent study have proven that our, in, our temperatures have increased 1.6 degrees since the Industrial Revolution. And if we don't change our ways, they'll increase 3 to 6 more degrees. Now, I'm going to say that again because I need you all to understand the severity of our temperature increasing 3 to 6 more degrees. We would see natural disasters on a scale we've never seen, and we would see food shortages that we can't even fathom. You see, the thing is, we don't even know what would happen if this happens because it's so unnatural. This is so alarming that 187 countries have got together at the end of 2015 to try to find a cure for our carbon addiction. They vowed to spend $100 billion in finding a cure. The United States and Obama alone said they're going to cut emissions by 28%, and China's not far behind. You see, it has been a long time coming that we need to come up with a cure for this. And these world leaders, they don't come together very often to try to make a change. My man Bill Gates has partnered with Obama to create the largest ever coalition for green philanthropy in the history of the planet. You see, Bill Gates sees what's going on. He sees the problem. But I'm not sure if everyone does. In a recent study, 63% of Americans said that they would be willing to cut down for large corporations to cut down on carbon emissions, but only one in six people would be willing to do it themselves. I know, it's shocking, but I have good news for you all. Are you still with me? So these leaders don't get together very often, but the fact that they have shows that we're moving in the right direction. They didn't get where they are by making false promises or taking no for an answer. A man named Elon Musk, the founder of Solar City and also the founder of a a company called Tesla Motors, which is the largest electronic car producer in the world. And SolarCity is one of the largest solar providers in the United States. He's combined these two companies to come out with a brand new battery for solar panels because that's exactly what we're missing with solar panels. When the sun goes down, we're not able to utilize its energy anymore. So Elon came up with this battery, which has revolutionized the solar industry. It makes solar accessible to the everyday user. It's a small black box that you can put on a wall and it hooks up to your solar panel or solar unit. Cost has been one of the main problems that people have had with solar. But think about it. Computers 30 years ago were the size of a wall. Now, every single person in this audience, and if you're viewing, you're viewing on a computer. 
Everyone has come in contact with a computer or owns one now. It's only a matter of time before cost is wiped away. Space isn't an excuse either, because there's hundreds if not thousands of wasted square footage on tops of every single American home. Elon said in the release of this power wall that it would take 160 million of them to get the United States off of fossil fuels and onto solar energy, and only 900 to get the whole world to join the solar revolution. You see, Elon has the vision. He wants to change the world, and so do I. But my mom would say, Ryder, slow down. You're trying to change the world. And I'd say, you're right, but I do need to slow down and think back to what I said in the beginning. You don't say I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall ever. No, you start one brick at a time. And that's exactly what we're doing here at Kennesaw State. You see, I didn't plan on coming here originally. You can call it destiny, call it fate, whatever you will. But here I am at Kennesaw, which happens to be one of the most environmentally conscious schools in the nation, ranked by the Princeton Review. Kennesaw had to go through a rigorous evaluation process to attain this title. I personally have been doing work with Kennesaw State's Hickory Grove Farm to get them onto solar panels and off of fossil fuels. It's about 15 minutes outside of campus. You see, Kennesaw has a very ambitious view for the future. In five years, Kennesaw wants to be, have all of its hot water heaters powered by solar panels. And in 10 years, wants to have solar panels on tops of all of our parking decks to charge electric cars. By 2050, Kennesaw wants to be completely carbon free. Kennesaw has a vision. I heard once that imagine is the most powerful word in the English language. And that's what I'm asking of you all today. Imagine with me that we would be able to use the sun's energy, use our natural resources instead of fossil fuels that's killing our planet. We didn't have to worry about wars plaguing our nations or the rising in, in gas prices. And that's where I believe we're headed if we can get a diverse group of people to come together and try to make a change. It's not going to take one major group's it's not going to take professional sales majors or architect majors or engineering majors. It's going to take a collective group. And it's not just a one country problem. It's a global issue that everyone will be affected if we don't make a change. A wise man once told me, he said, Ryder, there are three types of people in this world. There are people who watch things happen, people who wonder what happened, and people who make things happen. Now, I don't know about you all, but I don't want to wonder why my children or my children's children aren't, a aren't able to have enough food on their table to eat. And I'm not gonna watch as natural disasters plague our nation. No, I'm gonna be the type of person to use every God-given gift that I have and the gifts of the people around me to make a difference. Because I believe as a, a, uni a universe, as individuals, we should all come together and be able to make a difference together. And I invite all of you to join me or miss out on the greatest opportunity of a lifetime. Thank you.